you very much. I want to bring in now Kurt Bardella is a former spokesman for Breitbart and even and Evan, excuse me, uh, McMullen, the independent presidential candidate. Sorry about that, Evan. Uh, but, Sorry. <laughs> but before we get to them, I want to start with Joel Pollack. Uh, Joel is a senior editor at large and in-house counsel for Breitbart News. Uh, thank you, Joel. Thank you to the entire panel. But Joel, I'm going to start with you. Who is a real Steve Bannon? Is he an anti-Semite, a white nationalist, uh, a misogynist, as many believe? Well, the first thing to acknowledge is that Steve Bannon is a national hero. Because of Steve Bannon and Kellyanne, they saved Donald Trump's campaign, and they helped him win the White House. And as a result of that, we're going to see Supreme Court appointments of individuals who will uphold the Constitution. And for that, America owes Steve Bannon a great debt of gratitude. But no, he's not an anti-Semite. He is a person who treats all people equally. You can see I'm an Orthodox Jew, very observant. Uh, I keep the Sabbath. I keep all the Jewish holidays. I keep kosher. Steve and I have worked together in close quarters for four and a half years, and he's always been very sensitive to Jewish concerns. He's probably the most pro-Israel advisor ever appointed to the White House. And I have to fact check Tom Foreman there. You know, if you're going to report something, you have to get the facts right. Breitbart News has nothing to do with birtherism, absolutely nothing. And I can tell you that firsthand because I'm the person who reported on some of that phenomenon. And you have to we'll, make sure that you tell your we'll viewers discuss, the truth about this. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that with Kurt as well, who is a spokesman, in just a moment here. But you said he's not an anti-Semite. Is he a white nationalist? My question, a white nationalist, a misogynist, or even bigoted in any way that you know of? Not at all. Steve Bannon does not have a bone of prejudice. And in fact, Steve Bannon went out of his way at Breitbart to look for talent among non-traditional conservatives, just like Andrew Breitbart had championed the cause of black conservatives, Latino conservatives, women conservatives. Steve Bannon did the same thing, and he brought people on board. You know, I see Kurt there on television. He's an Asian-American conservative. Here we are, an Asian-American conservative, an Orthodox Jewish conservative, both of whom worked for Steve Bannon. And the question is whether he's a white nationalist. I think not. Well, then why traffic in that if he's not? Is that, is that even more insidious if he's not, but then he traffics in it? Can you name for me, Don, one white nationalist article at Breitbart? Just one. Well, I saw he, that whole build-up segment. I didn't see a single white nationalist article. Not one. There's, yeah. There is an article the offending the alt-right, and also the alt-right praises Breitbart, and, and even he has said he is a platform for the alt-right. So, um, you know, I, why traffic in that if, if, if he doesn't support it? It's important to draw a distinction between covering something and defending something. We published an article several months ago explaining the alt-right, talking about which parts of it were more offensive, which parts of it were less so. And that's not defending the alt-right. That's explaining it. In fact, the title, I believe, was something like explaining the alt-right to mainstream conservatives. That's journalism. That's not defense or advocacy. So I think it's very important to understand the distinction between those two. And that's a distinction we made very clearly at Breitbart mm -hmm. and still make today. I, I said traffic, and I didn't say defend it. But anyway, so I, I want to bring in the other part, the other members of the panel now so that they can get in on this. Kurt, you worked with Breitbart. You know Steve Bannon. Um, you know, this is a man who said the website is a platform for the alt-right. We've seen the headlines. Can you separate the man from the website? A similar question that, uh, that I asked Joel before. Can you separate the man? Does he hold these views? Well, whether he holds these views or not, I don't think there is a separation between Steve Bannon and Breitbart. I think at this point, they're one and the same. And I've said this before. They're now going to go from being the propaganda arm of the Donald Trump now being the propaganda arm of the federal government. You know, for the first time, you're going to have a White House co-chief of staff, essentially, being able to run a media enterprise right out of the West Wing. And I think that's incredibly concerning and troubling, given the type of content that Breitbart tends to publish and given the audience uh, that they're playing to. And, 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 and if we take Joel with his experience and say, OK, Joel, maybe he's not any of those things. Well, the audience that you're catering to certainly are those things. And so you're deliberately playing to that, playing to the worst divisiveness, the most prejudices, the, the, the worst racial divides to either try to get traffic or motivate people to support you. Uh, and I think that's despicable. Is it simply being too cute by half by saying, you know, well, pointing out, well, you're an Asian American, he's a Jewish American or whatever, but is that? Just because you treat one person that happens to be uh, you know, associated with a particular uh, gender, race, or, or religion, doesn't mean that, that that's how you treat everybody. Yeah. Evan, I want to ask you, the New York Times has a, a new interview with Bannon tonight, and they say he rejected what he called ethno-nationalist tendencies of some in the movement. His interest in populism and American nationalism, he said, has to do with curbing what he sees as the corrosive effects of globalization, and he believes his enemies are misstating his views and those of many Trump followers. These people are patriots, he said. They love their country. 
They just want their country taken care of. He added, it's not that some people on the margins, as in any movement, aren't the bad guys, racist, anti-Semites, but that's irrelevant. What's your reaction, Evan? Look, just as you said, Don, Bannon is somebody who's called Breitbart a platform for the alt-right movement. He cannot divorce himself from that statement. If that weren't the case, then, then I think that, that we'd be having a different discussion. But you know, he can say what he wants now, but the fact is that the KKK and the American Nazi Party are all celebrating his appointment. He said very truthfully that Breitbart was a platform for the alt-right movement. The alt-right movement is a white supremacist, white nationalist movement that does involve racism. It just is what it is. And if you're Donald Trump, if you're the president-elect, it's you know it, it should be high on your list of priorities to unite the country, especially after such a divisive campaign. And we don't we just don't see that with Bannon picked as as chief strategist. That's so, that said, Joel. Here's what my colleague uh, Anna Navarro tweeted this. She said, "Folks, it's real simple. Good, decent, inclusive Americans who believe in equality do not." get praised by the American Nazi Party and the KKK. So the question is, why does the President-elect Trump want Bannon in the White House? Joel? Well, let's put it this way. You have the new Black Panther Party praising Barack Obama. You have Obama sitting in Jeremiah Wright's church for 20 years, and he dissociated himself from none Jeremiah of those, Wright. No, so none I of think, those people were so advisors wait a second, to... You have to but you hold have on, to, hold on. No, he was if you're, a, if, you're asking right. me, if you're asking me mm -hmm. to be honest and fact check, None of those people were advisors to the president. He did not appoint any of those people. When You're he not applying office. the same standard to both people. Barack Obama was the president and came from this environment. Steve Bannon does not come from those environments. And Anna Navarro and Evan McMullen have both lied openly about Steve Bannon. They have both said he's an anti-Semite. Evan is on your show tonight. He can't defend that statement. Kurt Bardella sure didn't, even try, didn't even try to say whether Steve Bannon's an anti-Semite or not. So the entire premise of your discussion, Don, is Steve Bannon's an anti-Semite. I think we've proven that to be false because Evan can't defend it, Kurt can't defend it, Anna can't defend it, and it's not true. And I think that when you do this, this is what the media do, this is what the establishment does. They throw out a bunch of innuendo to try to smear somebody. The most offensive thing Steve Bannon ever did was win the White House with Donald Trump. And if it was up to these people, it would be Hillary Clinton picking the Supreme Court and consigning our democracy to decline. And Steve Bannon deserves the praise of these folks, not their condemnation. You know, I don't know how you can talk about you know, decline on Clinton's behalf when, in the reality, one of the very things that Donald Trump did uh, was on Sunday tweets out an attack against the New York Times that was 100% false, wasn't true, made up numbers about, about circulation that the Times disputed. So where's the Breitbart story saying Donald Trump lied about the New York Times? I mean, if we're going to play, let's be fact checkers, let's tell both sides of the story, where's the Breitbart story highlighting the inaccuracies of the many things that Donald Trump has said that just are point blank not true? I think that's a fair question. I think you should go write something about it. The point of this discussion is whether Steve Bannon's a white nationalist and an anti-Semite. I'm glad that we've put that myth to bed. Now let's move on to talking about the country. I don't think we've put that myth to bed. I think that's still a question about it. Just because you say it, it doesn't mean that he's not. Um, and I don't know that he is, but he certainly, he certainly traffics in it when he says... He made a business of it. He, yes. He certainly did not. You guys can't throw out lies like that and ask me to prove a negative when you can't even prove the positive. I could say anything about you, Don Lemon. You know, your network had a commentator the other night who said that the vote for Donald Trump was a white lash. Now, are you a black nationalist network because Van Jones said that there was a white lash? I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's Should, apples and definitely... pears. It's, you're, no, it's not. You're it's the same a thing. It's exactly the same to, thing. It has nothing to do I with think anything. You, can't, you, you are, cannot prove here's, the case here's you're you're making. Do, you're doing it. Someone who makes a comment on television in a discussion, Van Jones does not own a website that traffics in white nationalism or admits that it traffics in black nationalism or for the alt-black. So you're